Hi, my name is Katie Sawyer and I'm a trainee curator at Bodmin Keep Cornwall's Army Museum. I developed our summer exhibition, Frontiers of Fashion, which looks at the circular relationship between military uniform and civilian fashion. The exhibition came about because my special area of interest is textiles. I do crafts in my spare time such as null binding, which is an ancient form of crochet. Also, my undergraduate dissertation involved making fabric from stinging nettles using Bronze Age techniques, so it was nice to jump to something more modern for the exhibition. Whilst employed at Bob Minkie, I had to create a personal project, so using our uniform collection was an obvious choice for me. Military collections can seem old-fashioned and irrelevant to modern day concerns, so it was important for me to highlight the impact that uniform had on clothing in the past and the impact that it continues to have on modern day fashion. You would think that having studied this topic for months I would have an answer. My working definition of a uniform is a set outfit worn by multiple individuals, subject to regulations, usually by an organisation. I didn't spend a lot of time on categories though, as I was more interested in storytelling than strict definitions. The British Army red jacket is such an iconic item, and I found at least six different myths about why it is red. The actual reason seems to be that after the English Civil War, all the regiments were dressed in different colours. One colour needed to be chosen to visually unify the new model army. Red wool was chosen as it was cheap and available and continued to be used by subsequent monarchs. People seem to enjoy guessing other reasons for why the jackets were red. Bright red seems such a silly colour to wear on a battlefield as you'd be very visible to gunfire. However, weapons in the past were not that accurate and you would mostly fight by marching towards each other so you wouldn't need to camouflage. I think this is a case of applying modern ideas to the past rather than trusting that there was a reason why they made those choices. Just like now, materials have a huge impact on the end product because of their specific properties. Before the invention of synthetic fibres, almost everything was made out of linen, silk, cotton, wool and leather. Linen and cotton would have been suitable for hot climates, whilst wool and leather would have been used in cold. One of the big innovations in army uniform materials was the invention of Garbadine by Thomas Burberry in 1879. The fabric was waterproof, and instead of using heavy rubber like the Macintosh, it repelled water with its very fine threads and sophisticated weaving. This made it breathable and very popular for officers' coats in World War I, which then became known as trench coats. Military uniform appears frequently in modern fashion, perhaps because it has such a long visual history to draw upon. Musicians such as the Beatles in the 1960s could wear hussar jackets with elaborate braiding and immediately tap into that recognisable aesthetic. The split between uniform and fashion is also somewhat arbitrary as they've always influenced each other. For instance, fashionable Georgian uniforms in Britain were completely impractical for fighting as they were trying to follow civilian trends. There's a tension in wearing a uniform by choice, especially to make a political statement, for instance at the Vietnam War protests in the USA. Uniforms are often designed to impress, whether through glamour or precision, so it makes sense that fashion would use that for inspiration. I recommend that you look at my exhibition, Frontiers of Fashion, which is available digitally on our website.